lobby group, Afri Forum, is this morning in the Supreme Court of Appeal in Bloemfontein to appeal a judgment regarding the old South African flag. The group is opposing a 2019 ruling that banned the display of the old South African flag in most circumstances, including in private. Well, News of Africa's senior reporter, Dumala Mshaudi, is there for us. Uh, she, he joins us now. Dumala, good morning to you. Uh, take us back to the merits of this case. Just a reminder, what exactly did Afri Forum uh, fight for and that particular court which banned uh, this flag from being hoisted even in private? Well, Koli, the background to this particular story dates back all the way to 2017. In fact, uh, this matter was uh, brought forward by uh, the Nelson Mandela Foundation, uh, which uh, brought the matter to court, uh, citing the fact that uh, at a, a Black uh, Monday event, this was just a, a protest uh, against farm murders by Afri Forum, uh, there was a, a waving of the old apartheid flag. Now, back in 2017, it was found that uh, the waving of this flag, uh, you know, constitutes a hate speech. And, uh, of course, uh, uh, then Afri Forum then, uh, then uh, appealed that matter. And uh, it is now, again, uh, back to overturn uh, the fact that uh, uh, the Supreme Court had, uh, over, had uh, uh, basically ruled that uh, that uh, waving of the flag uh, does constitute uh, hate speech uh, because the apartheid flag uh, is uh, banned in public spaces. Uh, but let's get more on, on the merits of the case, Koli. I'm joined by uh, Ernst van Zell, uh from Afri Forum. Um, Ernst, uh, why do you, does Afri Forum feel that uh, overturning that judgment is so important? Why are you mm. coming to court? Mm. Well, firstly, maybe just a small detail there. It was uh, 2019 when that case was heard, and then we uh, made the appeal, or we uh, did a, a, a we, uh, filed our papers for appeal then because many people are asking why now in 2022 we only now heard in 2022 we're going to uh, appear in court now so we've been waiting for three years to to appear in court for that appeal uh, why are we here well it's because it's much it's about something much bigger than a flag uh, when you're fighting for something as a cardinal to our uh, constitutional order as freedom of speech is not always going to be popular you're not always going to be fighting on the grounds that you want it uh, afri forum doesn't wave the flag uh, we don't display the flag anywhere in our offices we uh, discourage our members from waving it, but we see the bigger picture of if uh, we start banning political symbols because they are offensive, it will lead to other symbols and more symbols and more symbols being banned. So maybe just to finish off there, when you look at the value of freedom of speech it is, that is enshrined in our constitution, it is there to protect speech that people dislike. It's there to protect speech that people might even hate. It's not there to protect speech that people like, otherwise it wouldn't have to be guaranteed in the constitution. But Ernst, on, on that very point, our constitution guarantees uh, freedoms so far as they don't infringe on the next person's freedom. And in fact, uh, we know that uh, there had been other cases where other political parties were taken to court mm -hmm. uh, for use of uh, uh, hate speech, something uh, using uh, an old song uh, that mm -hmm. can't be sung in public now. Uh, but the waving of the flag is also uh, deemed in the same uh, sort of class. So how can you make that argument? Yes, because in the, in the case of a, a song like Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer that you're referencing there, that is a direct call to violence. That is how it is co our hate speech is constitutionally defined. There needs to be a call to violence associated with the hateful speech. That is why uh, singing of Kill the Boer, Kill the Farmer, we took that to court. When it comes to the flag, there are many uh, contexts where it can be used where it doesn't uh, constitute hate speech. For example, and you will hear this in the court probably today but you heard it in 2019 in court as well the the flag has been seen at anti-anc service delivery protests it's been seen where i think if people will remember i think in 2019 there around uh, a woman uh, a black woman wore an old south african flag as a dress to some type of big event uh, to make a statement these are just simple examples of where the flag definitely does not constitute hate speech but that ruling in 2019 would make that hate speech and that's what afri forum is fighting for that we need to be able to look at this on a case-by-case -case basis rather than a blanket ban uh, publicly and in private as the Nelson Mandela Foundation wants. Yes. Uh, but uh, don't you think that uh, uh, if you look at it case by case, uh, you might argue that uh, perhaps uh, at an event like a sporting event, it would be a right place to 
wave such a flag, but because of what it represents, because, uh, you know, apartheid was uh, ruled uh, by international courts as a crime against humanity, mm -hmm. and that flag is uh, a representation of that system. So it, it's something that you're arguing that uh, a symbol of uh, crime against humanity is, is, is just and should be uh, allowed in our constitution in this uh, democratic era? Well, symbols mean many things. The, the ANC flag can mean many things. The new South African flag can mean many things. The ANC flag can mean uh, corruption to many people. The ANC flag can mean the Marikana massacre to some people. It really depends on that. And therefore, if, it, if you take the cases of people that see the ANC flag and then think uh, of the, the Marikana massacre, they will be able to call for the banning of that flag as well. That's why, that's why we are arguing in this case it needs to be a case-by-case -case basis because a, a symbol doesn't always mean the same thing in every context. But the, the, the international courts uh, haven't ruled or deemed the ANC as a mm. democratic dispensation that uh, is now the governing party yeah. to have been a crime against uh, humanity. Yeah, but... So uh, th th therefore the ANC flag cannot uh, be deemed to be something that uh, is uh, deemed to be uh, a symbol of a crime against humanity. I don't see where the um, yeah, it, logic there comes in. Yeah, but it can, it can represent other heinous things, other horrible things. Do you, do you think that uh, stealing uh, or looting uh, uh, food packets from the, the sick is not a, also a crime against humanity or something that is a horrible, horrific crime that needs to be condemned and then that is also then represented by your flag? The thing is that, that needs to be taken into account here is that when you ban symbols based on offense, that's exactly what the previous apartheid regime did. They banned books, they banned movies because they were offensive in that time. You're doing exactly the same thing. Every forum is kicking against that and saying that's not the right way to go about things uh, and uh, building a better society. But when you make that uh, analogy, again, mm. I have to push you on this one. It's, mm. um, the apartheid regime, uh, why it was uh, deemed a crime against humanity, mm -hmm. people were killed. People yes. were, were murdered. People mm -hmm. were you know, buried in unmarked mm -hmm. graves. Uh, so how can you liken that to uh, food parcels being stolen? No, because there's a, a very big spectrum of things that are morally heinous. It's not, we don't just condemn crimes against humanity. We condemn many morally wrong things. For example, if you look at that, uh, maybe while we're on the topic of crime against humanity, if you look at that declaration that declared cr uh, a part of the crime against humanity, that declaration also declares expropriation without compensation of a racial group's property as a crime against humanity. So the ANC trying to push that through in Parliament is the ANC attempting to commit a crime against humanity based on that very uh, document. But if one goes back, uh, the land was taken uh, from indigenous peoples here in South Africa uh, through the barrel of a gun. So that could also be argued that uh, that was initially the biggest crime uh, against uh, humanity. So when you take the argument that far, uh, where, where does uh, the, the, the gist of it actually begin and end? The, the gist of it is that if you, if you want to go on the, the, uh, the, the criteria of a crime against humanity, that criteria will still stand uh, no matter who is doing the expropriation. If the ANC is doing it by that criteria of that very document that declared apartheid a crime against humanity, the ANC will also be committing one.